Isn't that a fun way to start the morning? Talking about punching Nazis. <laughs> Just brings brings a little little spring to my. St I'm kidding. We shouldn't put. Should we punch? I don't know. Let's get on with the day. So I started this off with a little uh, slide about David Avocado Wolf because if you came uh, to this uh, talk based on my bio and the program saying that I call myself the rock star and Indiana Jones of the debunking universe, and you came to this just to hate watch this, I don't really think that about myself. But David Avocado Wolf actually calls himself that. So there are people in this universe who take themselves that seriously, which is a little disconcerting, but onwards to this talk about gurus, a subject near and dear to my heart, the business of being a guru. <laughs> now, normally I start this off with a little, a little ditty about, uh, about my dog, who I call Science Dog, who's a little bit skeptical. Now, unfortunately, Science Dog is a vaccine skeptic. Boo, Science Dog, boo, skeptic dog. Uh, but he's not, he's not a vaccine skeptic in the way that you normally think of a vaccine skeptic. Now you see, in order to get Science Dog into the car, his name is Buddy, by the way, he, if he spoke English, he'd hate me. Um, but in order to get him into the car to get his vaccines, I have to sing him the Doggy Park song. If, if you guys don't sing to your dog, you're monsters. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. It's the Doggy Park song is to the tune of Rubber Duck from Ernie and Bert for the record. Uh, and, in order, and it's one of few things he actually understands. And in order to get in the car, I have to sing that song. And suddenly he finds himself at the vet and not the doggy park, and he is very disappointed. So that is why he is a vaccine skeptic. But we're not talking about, <laughs> we are not talking about science dogs today. We are talking about gurus. So this is a talk on guru dog. He does not demand evidence. He demands your blind faith and your tribute and your belief. So on to a darker territory today, uh, belief and, un, uh, and unquestioned faith in a person and not ideas. And we're gonna talk a little bit about gurus. Um, and the business of being a guru, because that's something that I go after a lot. I've gone after in my writing uh, these gurus, people like the Food Babe uh, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, she's delightful, isn't she? Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and David Avocado Wolf, who uh, some people think they haven't heard about him, but he's got 11 million followers, and he says things like, chocolate is an octave of sun energy. Oh, he's fun. Um, and there seems to be kind of a pattern uh, to how these gurus uh, emerge, uh, you know, out into this, you know, mar uh, marketplace of ideas. You know, they kind of, they struggle a bit with their health. Either they had, you know, these, these health problems that modern medicine couldn't help them with, or they were overweight. Uh, and then, you know, they, they have kind of an aha moment where they figure out, you know, that, that modern medicine wasn't helping them and they, they have a breakthrough and then they beat their health with something outside the medical system and they are, and they find a way to, to fix this. And the way they do always somehow involves losing a lot of weight and they'll tell you all of their secrets come to their website come and they'll tell you all of their secrets out of the goodness of their heart for 19.95 a month plus tax that's always how it goes first you know don't worry it's out of the goodness of their 19.95 a month pay with your paypal apple pay eBay, and you, don't worry they'll give it to you but that's how it always goes there's always you know there's a there is oof, hold on i need this thing off the mic stand because I like to move around while I'm talking, but they always have a way of, of doing this. And there is a, there is a rhythm to these gurus. Uh, and at the end of the day, they always seem to have these, these same things in common. And this is important. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being adorable, but they always seem to be charming and conventionally attractive. Have you noticed this with them? They're always, they're, they're adorable and that draws you in in order to accept some of their nuttier claims. Uh, and this is important because I like to say I could have accidentally landed into the guru business instead of the disseminating of good ideas that could be easily questioned if somebody posts sufficient evidence business. Because once upon a time, I did not question evidence so sufficiently. Uh, because, you know, as, as we know, I started off a few years ago, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, with, with my spattering of degrees. I have, you know, a background in chemistry and forensics, uh, you know, worked for a bunch of years in labs, uh, 
you know, and started off on this after, you know, starting Cybabe kind of on a whim. It was, you know, Friday night and I was bored. Literally how this whole thing started. Uh, you know, most people have social lives, I start blogs. Uh, but, you know, that was kind of how this whole thing started and kind of took off and after, you know, working in chemistry, SciComm kind of happened. But it didn't happen unspurned. I uh, had the same kind of origin story that a lot of these crazy gurus did. Again, this is not a guru story, not a guru. Want you to question me. Uh, but um, I had mysterious health ailments. I was overweight. I had this crazy headache that started one day, and I always like to ask an audience this, how long's the longest headache you've ever had in your life? Most of the time I'll get back, some people will say, you know, a couple days, two weeks. Every once in a while, there'll be someone else in the audience who has the same thing that I do. I got a headache that started on March 7th of 2010, and it never went away. I, I promise you I've tried Excedrin. It's, <laughs> it's a background in toxicology and I tried the headache called the headache medicine. <laughs> this is the thing that happened. I've been to doctors, I've tried everything, and it, you know, over a long enough period of time, medicine eventually worked. But in the meantime, I fell into all the advice of these natural health bloggers and I tried going organic and tried going vegan and tried all the things that the gurus tell you to do. Um, and eventually I came out swinging for science, but in the meantime, man, did I try and believed all of the advice that I now debunk. And man, could I have been a really good guru? I mean, whoo! If I had just decided that I wanted to cash in, because shilling for bullshit, oh, does that stuff pay? Like, like Vanny Harry, she makes way more money than me, I'm just saying. Uh, shilling for bullshit pays off. Uh, but the things you need for that, the compelling origin story, the struggling, the aha moment, all that good stuff. And I mean, I, I take great little naturey pictures with a cute dog, whoo, I've got ador, I mean, look at this hair, I have adorable hair. Um, I would have been <laughs> such a good guru. Uh, and I can write the tits off of these girls who are writing all these little organic-y blogs. Uh, but, but, you know, I just, this was not, eventually, I found my way back to evidence, figured out GMOs weren't like making me grow a third nipple, uh, you know, figured out that these things were safe, found my way back to evidence, this all worked out in the end. Uh, and the other thing is that if you notice the big old difference between me and the people that I debunk, uh, they're telling you that food's killing you, I'm saying, here, check my work, check my work, have a look at the MSDS sheets, please tell me if I'm wrong and I'll change my mind. And that's the biggest difference, is these people, when they're questioned, uh, they double down and they block you on their social media, and I tell you, I'll change my mind. And that's what I would hope in the marketplace of ideas, when we in the skeptic and we in the, in the atheist community, if we're questioned, we'll check ourselves and we'll change our mind. But one of the bigger places that I found that these people are propagating their misinformation is kind of where uh, science and evidence and where the public meet are in headlines and in the media. And there are two places where I found these gurus um, are really, really pushing misinformation is in food and in toxins. And if you find, <laughs> if you find uh, a little bit of bullshit uh, in, uh, in a headline on food, that's where you're gonna find uh, a guru issue. Uh, and I found, I tracked all of these over the course of a week and I love these. Uh, <laughs> they're my, my headlines where everything has gone so, so, so wrong. Uh, 30 foods not to eat after, th I love these so much. 30 foods not to eat after age 30 and 10 uh, simple ways to turn your meal into an aphrodisiac. Some of these foods were on the, both lists. Um, I, I'm a woman after the age of 30. Uh, I don't know if they were telling me something about my, my good years being up. Um, <laughs> this, this bothered me a little bit. Uh, let's see, 20 best and worst uh, gas station foods for weight loss. Now, so <laughs> I, I don't know about you when you're on a diet, I don't go to the gas station. <laughs> But the other thing about that is that there are people who, you know, some of these gurus who will tell you, you know, everything, you know, to only eat at the outer aisles of the, of the grocery store. The gas station is the inner aisles. Um, see, 23 worst food additives in America. And there are some of these food bloggers that will tell you that every, you know, that every food additive is bad. You shouldn't touch them at all. So science tends to corroborate with itself. Bullshit tends to not agree with itself. And that's something we're gonna see again in a minute. Uh, with some of these gurus. Uh, let's see, nine reasons a oh, juice cleanse will work in your favor. The same website that I plucked this off of a week before had run an article I'd written on uh, why your 
uh, why your detox is bullshit. So I, I, it never surprises me why people are confused about how they should eat or how they should keep themselves healthy because you don't get the same information the same you know two weeks in a row from one website. Uh, I thought these were kind of interesting put next to each other. Six foods thin women eat every day and 15 things a registered dietitian keeps in her pantry. They tend to gear uh, articles about working out towards men and they tend to gear articles about uh, eating towards women. And I thought that was kind of just an observation I've been, I've been, you know, dialing up over time. Uh, and the last one, if you had to eat one superfood every day, which would you choose? Superfoods are not a thing. Um, it's, and that's going to come up again later. Now, this is just a thing we're going to keep on circling back to. Science corroborates with itself. Bullshit can't get its shit straight. Um, but one more uh, thing we're going to come back to. These people all seem to keep going back to toxins and food bullshit. Uh, and detoxes are something that they can't get away from. If you're dealing with a, with a guru, they're going to tell you you have to detox. At least in today's environment, it's always, always, always about the detoxes. And there are a bunch of different programs that include a detox. And they never tell you they do exactly the same thing. Some of them will say it cures cancer. Some of them will say it just makes you feel lighter or treats acne. Or, or, I don't know, sucks toxins out of your feet with a pad that turns gray, that turns out it's just making mud. Seriously, that's what those little tinoki, whatever they're called, pads do. It's just, it's literally mud attached to your foot. Um, but, you know, you have to look at the expertise of the people uh, that's, that are, you know, recommending these things and what's actually in them. Uh, and this is going to make a lot of these things go away. If you, has anyone, now we're amongst friends who, who here has ever done a cleanse? It's okay, I'm only judging you a little. Um, <laughs> but, but here, it's okay, here's the thing. They, they don't work. <laughs> I used to work in drug testing. They don't work. But here's, let's have a look at what the science of them is versus what they actually do. Now, it sound, they sound healthy, right? They sound like, you know, Taylor Swift's delightfulness, Valtrex, and, and you know, unicorn uh, elixir in a, in a gritty green bottle, don't they? They just sound wonderful, don't they? But what it comes down to is sugar water. It's really just sugar water. And some of them have almost as much sugar as a pumpkin spice latte. Oh yeah, and it doesn't matter where the sugar came from, it's still just sugar. Uh, some of these have next to no uh, iron or protein, and the cost of one of these for three days is $144, depending on the company you order them from. You're getting nothing. But the reason, do you know why people fall for these? Number one is the halo, health halo effect. It sounds vaguely healthy and it tastes like crap, so of course it's good for you. Uh, and number two, we fall for them because we hear these things so often uh, on the internet, and we all know that everything on the internet is true. Abe Lincoln said so. <laughs> you know? And I mean, I get, that it's, I, I get that that's a silly thing to say, and of course I say it for two reasons. Number one, I will take a cheap laugh where I can get it. It's, it's rule of comedy. Uh, and number two, it's because we are in an age where we don't know how to question sufficiently things we see on the internet. Like, we see it, we see it coming from, you know, somebody who we know, uh, and you know, why would our friend put out bad advice? Why would somebody, you know, not question that? We see it often enough and it becomes true. Uh, and this is just not how evidence works. You know, just because it's on the top 10 search results on Google doesn't make it true. It just means it's there a lot. So we have to learn how to question evidence and we have to learn how to get better at it. Uh, but the other reason we know that this slide isn't true is because obviously Marilyn Monroe said it. <laughs> so I just, I have, I have, I'm a horrible person, I know. Uh, but <laughs> the one, uh, one quick thing about that, I, I also wanted to just show you something to prove that I had psychic powers. I knew that you were going to laugh at those two slides and I actually knew your other reaction to that was a quiet, qu um, hidden reaction. Just wanted to reveal that I had, uh, had precognition on that. Ready? <laughs> You're welcome. Now, you have to ask yourself, was that a question of repeated testing or was that precognition? Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, bad joke. Now, if that had failed, I would have said that was proof that psychic powers didn't work. So, pre-planned. But here's the thing. These, all these gurus that we're talking about, they can't even agree with each other on certain things. Uh, for example, vaccines. One of them has come out saying vaccines are a government plot to inject your children with mercury, David. Uh, one of them has not really said much about vaccines and has shunted it off to her experts, but has never said if she's vaccinating her kids, Gwyneth. Uh, and one of them uh, has you know, vaguely hinted that she might be or might not be vaccinating, but hasn't come out and said so either way. Very 
Manny. So which one's right? One of them is probably wrong. One of them's probably wronger than the others. Which one's the most wrong? And their followers have to answer that. And that's the thing when you're dealing with stuff that's just not science, is that you have to really sit there and press yourself on this, and you have to realize they're not gurus with all the answers. They're just people, and they're fallible. This isn't religion. <laughs> but none of it's religion anyway. But let's go through some of these gurus that people hold up for the answers for everything, starting with my favorite one and starting with the actual headline from the last article that I wrote about him. David Avocado Wolves, the biggest asshole in the multiverse. <laughs> we, we couldn't write about Rick Sanchez, so. But moving on, uh, David Avocado Wolf is quite the character. So he started off, um, and these are actual pictures undoctored, um, so, I mean, he looks kind of guru-y, right? Like, that's the guy you look at and think, he knows something spiritual, or he, you know, bought a shirt on vacation. Um, <laughs> you know, one or the other. But, you know, he's, he seems, you know, kind of guru-y from what he talks about. He went raw vegan at 19 after self-diagnosing with a lactose intolerance. Uh, you know, he wrote a really popular book, book that, you know, helped some people reclaim their health on, on raw veganism. Uh, you know, he popularized a lot of, of very of seemingly healthy diets. Uh, and, you know, it's, he's done some things that have helped people with their health. He goes on these trips to Peru with people. He does all these things that sound vaguely healthy. And he is just utterly fucking full of shit. Um, <laughs> Here's the thing, like how, let's just go back and forth from the last picture to this one. Which one looks like a guru and which one looks like an obnoxious blender salesman? I mean, there's a big difference. An image makes a difference in terms of how you think of somebody as having all the answers and just being someone who's trying to sell you some junk. Like, there's a, a big difference there. Now, looking at the list of things he believes in, those are some crazy things there, and these are all verifiably true, not making anything up, not pulling anything out of context. These are things this man believes in, and the people at Nutribullet trust him to sell their very nice blender, for the record, but still. <laughs> This is, these are things he believed in. He started off as a superfood guru and then started telling people if you blend any food, it turns it into a superfood. Superfood's still not a thing. Uh, but he believes that you know, we didn't evolve, that everything was created. Uh, and, it's there, and he says the religion's not a thing, but still believes in creationism. Uh, these are things that he 100% espouses, thinks the earth is flat, and still on his website, if you go back to that first slide, says that he circumnavigated the globe a certain number of times. I'm like, <laughs> look, look back at that one, David. Think about that really hard. <laughs> um, let's see, his, he has, you know, his, has talked about you know, not wanting uh, wealth. It says he stays away from wealth, sued a business partner for $10 million through years, years of, of legislation for that. We can talk about that one later, but we can spend the entire half hour on that <laughs> alone. But he, is, he was a nasty court case. And after, in, at one point during that court case, uh, was requisitioned for, uh, for a mental exam and claimed he moved to Canada to avoid having a mental examination. He's a character. Uh, but this is, this is somebody who people hold up as a guru and he's really just a guy. Now, I mean, going back and looking at this slide, so guru-y, so sweet, right? Less guru-y, wanna see him as un y as you ever will? Just a guy, just a guy sleeping on a dirty mattress. Just how, it's gonna be really hard to look at him as naturey now, right? But I mean, image is a lot for these people. They dress in these really pretty pictures. Look at him, he's out in nature, guru-y, right? Nature, and that was him after he gave a talk in that other picture. But man, it's hard to look at him as somebody who you can take deep health advice and you know, intrinsic knowledge about the universe when he looks like this. And I'm not saying that, you know, judge people on their appearances 100%, because there are some pictures of me looking derpy. There are definitely some weird ones out there. But at the same time, I'm not claiming intrinsic knowledge of the universe. I'm saying that I've read some science books and that they're verifiable knowledge with other scientists in the universe. This guy claims that he has deep wisdom that he plucked out of his hair. Um, but, but how much sillier does it look when he's just looking at a disco ball with his hair and some possibly culturally strange, or not strange, but culturally not appropriate braids? 
just saying seems less, you know, wisdomy of the universe and a little bit more college dude bro who got his hands on some books on raw eating. Just saying. But moving on to our Miss Gwyneth Paltrow of the Jade Eggs. Um, this was an actual picture that I found online of her. Uh, we wrote an article about her called uh, The Unbearable Wrongness of Gwyneth Paltrow. She was not happy about this one either. Um, I found the follow-up slide uh, to this picture from this presentation. Um, she didn't want this one getting out. <laughs> so it might have been a Photoshop. Uh, but here's the thing. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow has said, um, she was interviewed a few weeks ago on Jimmy Kimmel, and it, it came up, you know, how do you find the things, how do you vet the things that go onto your website? And she just kind of said, I don't know. I don't know how any of this stuff works. And she's been giving out some specious health advice on her website. Now, it has to be said, I like Gwyneth Paltrow as an actress. I think she puts out some good movie. She's a good little actress. Uh, and she's very lovely. I've, he I've heard from some mutual friends. She's a very nice person. It doesn't mean she's not putting out bullshit. And this is the problem with her. It's not anything about her acting. It's not that she, it's not any of that stuff. It's that she's putting out harm, potentially harmful information. Uh, so let's have a look at how these things started with her. Because all these people seem to have an origin story once again. Uh, she had a headache and panic attack and she thought she was dying. Well, call the Marines when you had a headache, jeez. I, I've got a story on that, Gwyneth. We can talk about it over some, some organic kombucha. Uh, but she had a headache and thought she was dying and she went on a health quest. She's tried everything. She's even been stung by bees for health purposes. That's a thing that she did. But every time she's tried something new, she's been like, I just want to share it with people. And of course, she has all the, all the requisite you know, warnings that you know, check with your doctor. This is not for medical advice uh, on her website. And it's become a repository of, you know, of, of health information for the Beverly Hills uh, sect. You know, people who can afford to throw away their money on bullshit. Uh, but one of her other things that's come up recently is, of course, that she's partnered with Tracy Anderson to try to help give her the best body that money can buy. And money does have to buy it because it's a $1,500 fee to sign up for her gym and a $900 monthly fee to keep going. That's how you afford a Gwyneth Paltrow body. So she's not just a guru, she has a guru within a guru <laughs> when you're going to Gwyneth because that's how much it costs to not just buy Gwyneth stuff, but to continue getting her body. And yes, that is a real quote uh, from Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, it's that she balances her cigarettes with her tofu and she does admit to smoking once a week because you have to buy organic, but you can smoke a class one carcinogen as long as it's just once a week. But most, mo one of the things she's most famous for is, of course, uh, you know, other than the acting, but recently she's come in for some notoriety, and this might be a little sensitive for some people, but, you know, you've come with me so far, so let's carry on, is the jade egg controversy. Oh, we're going there, people. We're there. This is, this is an actual picture from her website. From the website. So let's talk. We're going to go there. You're nice people, and I think we can have an adult conversation about this. She calls them the yoni egg, the yoni jade egg, supposed to increase feminine energy, help with a variety of things. But somebody apparently forgot to tell her that they could cause bacterial vaginosis and toxic shock syndrome. These are very real things, and the things she says that they can do are not very real things. She's also recommended a number of things that can cause other health ailments. She said that people can drink raw goat's milk in order to treat parasites that they haven't even been diagnosed with. Well, the problem with that is that raw goat's milk can contain parasites. This is, <laughs> this is something we call not scientific. Uh, and Gwyneth Paltrow has espoused a lot of other crazy health things uh, that, as you can see, long list. Uh, but she has, you know, whenever she's been called out on this, she's told science to bring their A game. There are doctors calling her out at this point. If you've seen on social media, Dr. Jen Gunter, who's been doing amazing work, uh, calling, just bring, calling her to the, to the carpet for every crazy claim she's made, uh, especially when it comes to things like, you know, steaming the vagina. Uh, not things you should do. Uh, these are, you know, these are things that the science community has just has to keep calling celebrities out on when they say crazy things because you can't let somebody with next to, with, you know, no medical certifications, no medical training, keep misleading people because people want these. There is a 60, these are, these jade eggs cost $66 and there was a 4,000 person waiting list for them when they first came out. But you know, I don't know why this happens, because people like Gwyneth Paltrow, they look like that. 
They look so glowy, and if she's doing it, it has to be okay, right? I mean, what, maybe you put the jade egg in her and that's why she glows. <laughs> maybe that's why it happens, but you know what, that's, like, as I said, part of the formula for this whole guru thing is looking just freaking gorgeous. So maybe, maybe the whole way that we get rid of this is by getting the same advice from somebody who's slightly, shall we say, doesn't look like Gwyneth Paltrow, but has more medical credentials. So maybe, would you take that same advice if it came from someone who wasn't Gwyneth Paltrow, like say, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Steve Buscemi has more medical training than Gwyneth goddamn Paltrow. Steve Buscemi was a New York City firefighter from 1980 to 1984, and that means he was also an EMT. So that means he has more medical training than Gwyneth Paltrow. Wouldn't you love those baby blues telling you, hey, stick a rock in your pussy? <laughs> Now, I don't know if that would be the delivery. That's up for him for, for artistic license. But you can shop for it as his new store, Boosk. <laughs> the women's lifestyle and health boutique. <laughs> I, I don't know about you. I just don't think women are going to flock to it because they want it from somebody who looks like Gwyneth. But that's why I say the looks matter. And it's not, it's not anything about wonderful thespian Steve Buscemi, obviously. However, it does make the point that that's part of why people shop from people like Gwyneth Paltrow. They want that life, and they want to look like that, and they think somehow it's gonna happen. It's not. But moving onwards to one of my mm, longtime favorite gurus, Vani Hari. Oh, fills my heart with glee. Um, but Vani Hari, um, this might have been a slight Photoshop. Um, Vani Hari has made a living and a name for herself in harassing companies into changing, sorry, <clears throat> helping consumers understand what's in their food. Uh, and of course, doing this by raising social media campaigns about this. So the way that she does this is by finding a chemical that sounds, you know, a little scary to someone. And of course, uh, you know, explaining with completely accurate science to the consumer why this thing that they can't pronounce is bad. Now, let's, as I said earlier, image is very important in this. This was a picture that uh, took off and went kind of viral after uh, the Democratic National Campaign, I believe in, uh, in 2012, um, because it looked like she's you know, speaking truth to power. She's holding up these signs uh, that say, you know, label GMO, and she said it was a random moment in which she drew these signs with her lipstick. I, I've tried to draw with lipstick before. It doesn't work out quite that evenly, and she doesn't seem like somebody who would wear black lipstick, but that's another, uh, you know, it wasn't in and 2012, come on, work with me. Uh, but, you know, she, you know, she, another thing, she, you know, she had the standard guru story. She was overweight, she struggled with health, uh, she had appendicitis, and that was her aha moment. She, you know, she reformed her health, she cut all the junk out of her diet, and then started the website and went on all these campaigns to get places to cut scary sounding things out of their menu and, and you know, get, uh, you know, help them improve their food for their customers. And she's just been doing wonderfully ever since, or not. But moving on, let's have a look at the darker side of Vani Hari. Now let's have a look at this picture, which is from a slightly different angle. She just looks like the jackass who's standing in front of you at every event you've ever been to, <laughs> right? Those people behind her are like, come on, I wanna see the next speaker. It's a photo op, and that's all it was. And it looked really good for her for a few months. She stood up with a few signs. Uh, but part of uh, what she's, her whole way of working has been taking a word that people don't understand, take, taking it out of context in terms of how it works for safety, and making it sound scary to people so that they'll sign a lot of petitions made a lot of money for her until people figured out she was just going after big name companies. Now, if she wanted, and I would love to see her do this, uh, there's a pesticide that uh, before, mm, before the current administration took over, uh, looked like it was going to be pulled from the market. I, as a former pesticide chemist, would have been happy if it had been pulled from the market because every so often you find a problem with a chemical after it goes out. Um, I would have been fine with being pulled. If she had been very serious about uh, food cus uh, consumer safety health uh, within you know the pesticide and within uh, in, you know within this sphere, I would have loved to have seen her send out all of her you know over a million followers because let's not forget she still has a big following 
I would have loved to have seen her send out her followers and send petitions to the EPA to have this pulled. Instead, she's still having them harass the Girl Scouts for using GMOs. So if she wants to show that she's serious about this, that's what she'd do. But instead, she's still taking pictures with food because that makes her look like a guru. <laughs> so here's the thing, she looks really, really guru-y here. You know, she's, she looks healthy and she's gore, again, she's beautiful. And she's, she is keeping herself at a healthy weight. You know, she does all the things that you're, that you're supposed to do and she seems to know how to keep herself healthy. But there is a way that she doesn't look like a guru at all. It's when she's on Alex Jones. You don't get to hang out with white nationalists and still look like a guru, I'm sorry. These are things that bust, other than you know everything she says, uh, there, are th there are things that seriously bust holes in your credibility. So if you wanna just talk about food, stick to, you know, go ahead and stay with the people that are working on health. Uh, but this is the type of thing that will, that, that even if it's just by association, that makes you seem not like you're crusading for food, but that you're looking for anywhere that will give you a place to talk. And it's, it's seriously disappointing when somebody who started off with what might have been good intentions uh, just turns into uh, you know, somebody who's, who's shrieking into conspiracy theory websites. Uh, but there, here's the thing, the, these three are some of the bigger ones. There are other up and coming gurus. It's whack-a-mole with these people, it's completely whack-a-mole. Uh, but onwards, we have the paleo mom who tells people she has an autoimmune protocol for them, uh, not a real doctor, PhD, who worked in a, a tangential field of research, uh, momovation, uh, once again, tells people, literally tells people, I have the secret to real health, follow me. I'm really happy for her because she got her health in order. She's not, uh, you know, there's no secret to real health. It's less calories, moving more, making sure you're not smoking, getting out of the house a few times a day, having sex occasionally. These things will all make you healthy. Help, happy and healthy. You don't need a secret. You don't need to pay her $19.95 a month. Uh, Dave Asprey uh, tells people that drinking 600 calorie coffee butters uh, in the morning makes you not have an appetite. Yeah, you just ate 600 calories. <laughs> this is not a secret. Uh, but here's the thing, why are we talking about them? We're an atheist group, you are not the people. None of you folks would ever have fallen for one of these people. Of course not. Wouldn't have happened to me, wouldn't have happened to anyone in here. But why are we talking with them? It's because d I don't want anyone in here to fall into thinking about any of our leaders in here as gurus. Because we're supposed to go after ideas, not people who have the end all be all answer to everything. And that's something that I've seen happen before. I've seen people come to me thinking that I have the answers to all of the things. I'm like, no, I, I profess to have some good answers about science. And that's about it. I don't, I'm not gonna give you the answers for how to, you know, how to handle, you know, when your cat is peeing on the rug. I'm, good, good luck with that. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not the answer to everything in the science world. I'll point you towards a different expert uh, if it's outside of my field. And I think that's what people should be doing is pointing people towards the right experts. Uh, because these guys, um, you know, they started off with perhaps some good ideas. You know, as much as I don't like the food babe, she maybe started off with some things to help people with their health. She said, eat more vegetables. That's not a bad idea. Uh, David Avocado Wolf, as much as I can't stand him, going, you know, eating your raw fruits and veggies, which is what, you know, he started off as, not a bad idea. Most of his stuff is horrible, but raw fruits and vegetables, not bad for your health. We're, they're not all bad ideas. Gwyneth Paltrow, okay, most of her stuff is bad. I'm not gonna defend her, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we have to remember, these people start off with some okay ideas, which is how they get a following. But we have to remember that the t reverse is true for our side. I'm wrapping up David, I promise. <laughs> um, but we have to remember that on our side, it also means that we can occasionally have some wrong ideas, or just that we're human, more accurately. Our four horsemen of the athe atheist apocalypse are human, and it means that they occasionally disagree with each other. And this is where I have a joke about butt sex. It's gonna make everybody's sphincter clench up just a little bit. <laughs> so, they're all, they're brilliant, we love them, we've read their works, they've given us all comfort to come out as atheists, to joke about it, they brought us closer together. And one of these men has openly joked that anal sex is overrated. And one of them has openly espoused that anal sex is a pleasurable activity. One of these men is wrong. <laughs> 
And that means that they might be wrong about other things. And that means that you, as thinking people, as critical thinkers, have to evaluate what they say about everything individually because they're fallible. We're not, we're not religious, we're critical thinkers. And we're gonna be critical thinkers about everything they say because they're not gurus. So how do you do that? How do you go out into the world remembering that even the people that you hold up as the people who are, who are thought leaders within their community, they're not gurus, they're just, just a bunch of jackasses like me. You remember, you have to treat every idea individually. Treat everything like, like a bunch of monkeys on typewriters. Sometimes you're gonna get the works of William Shakespeare, sometimes you're gonna get Donald J. Trump. Um, most of the time, not gonna happen, but especially not from, you know, from your thought leaders up here. But question us, ask us for evidence, show us new evidence, ask questions, and don't be afraid to. And don't be afraid to hold our asses to the fire if we're wrong, because we deserve you to ask us questions. You deserve answers from us. But don't ever treat us like gurus, because like I said, we came into this business because we're not gurus. I'm Yvette Dantrema, I'm Sci Babe. I'm not a guru, thank you so much.